morning, good afternoon, not sure what time you're watching this, but welcome to our Monday preview of our race meet out at Hollywood Bets Gravel. It's a poly meet of eight races. It's the Betway Summer Cup week. Hopefully you've sorted yourself out for the weekend and we look forward to seeing you at the races. Right, uh, of course I've got uh, some social media activity around Waited to Win's Twitter account. With all the drama going on in Twitter, hopefully Waited to Win will keep its space there. At Waited to Win is our handle. And um, we've also got our WhatsApp number on the screen, 069-164-3272. Darren Burrows and Daryl Marie are back with me. We're getting to this week. We're building up into the weekend, so we need to make a bit of cash now. And uh, looks like a fairly decent car today. I mean, in terms of being a punter friendly, I hope I've read it right. Darren, what do you think? I think it's a really tough card, uh, Clyde. I think we can open up with uh, with the favourite winning race one, but it gets very tricky after that. Um, touching on Asser Ludu in race one, jumped awkwardly, uh, was very green in the early part of the race, must have been eight, ten lengths off the speed. He quickened up smartly and then got outrun late. Um, he had a bit of a tummy on him, I must admit. Um, I think he's going to come on length from that run. And as long as he keeps his position from a one draw, I think he'll win. Yeah, okay, so we can we can basically start with that. Or are you happy to start? I mean, Michael Roberts and Rachel Vinnick at the moment are untouchable. Yeah, they right are. Right now. But, but who says the Swiss isn't going to do the same thing in his second slot? But what about the quality of the competition that he's taken on? Well, you got the likes of number four, Captain Catman. Yeah. He's having his first run for his new yard. He's been fitted with a set of blinkers. He's had three seconds in a row, so he's knocking very loudly. Right. Uh, wave, wave Warrior won again. Yes. He placed in a handicap. And third, there's a, third another place, one in there, Daryl. Third place, Unique Power won. Fourth yes. place? Uh, Aurora Storm. Fifth, also won indirectly. Yes, okay. All right, so that's fairly strong, I suppose. But I would have thought that as a Reluda just one run today, you know, improver, it's 9 to 10. I don't know if that's value or not. Clyde, I'm not uh, saying. In, in a few months' time, you might not be able to compare these horses. Yeah, yeah. If he gets left again, he might be in trouble. That's all I'm saying. You're worried about that. Okay. Well, he's a William Longsword out of a Jet Master Mare. beautifully bred. Um, Daryl does have a little bit of a concern. But uh, he does seem to have the oncoming look. And the, from the, the combination is just, at the moment, they're just formidable. Here's what we're going to do, race one. It is the start of some bipod as well. Daryl has worked his bipod out. We'll put that up for you now. And he's going conservatively. He's quite right, I suppose, in terms of his concern. In terms of one and four by banker one, by three, four, five, six, by two and three, by two and four, by five, six, eleven, twelve. It's a 128 grand bipod that we want to bank in race one. And hopefully we can double up in the first. Yeah, the bet two to one about number one, Stealth Attack. Alison Wright, another stable that's absolutely deadly. Keegan DeMello's got the ride. Two to one joins with Ideal Gift this morning at around 10 o'clock. And um, that's Robbie Hill. They've also been having a few winners. And then Michael Roberts comes in with She's Not Easy here at 28 to 10. Those are the principal three horses in the market. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Darren, I guess we're, we're not looking past that, or are we? No, we're not looking past numbers one, two, and nine. Now, ideal gift uh, from a deep draw, probably tucking off the pace. Um, she ran on really strongly last time out. And if taking to the poly this time around, I think uh, she's the horse to beat. I've got respect for Stealth Attack. I had a look at her pedigree. I do believe she's looking for the mile, so could improve further. And she's not easy, also one for the shortlist. Okay. I see from the ideal gift, Daryl, uh, the form's not too bad. It's held up very nicely. And we've got this horse, uh, Sea Goddess, that came far back, came out and won. Close there was Lady of Gold, Blazing Kiss. All came and ran uh, decent sort of races. How do Is you that see that? Is that the Natalia form line? The Natalia, yeah. Yeah, I'm not convinced about that form line, though, Clark. Not but, strong uh, enough. She should be there about. I'm quite big on Stealth Attack here. You know, Keegan de Mello, Alison Wright from a one draw. Yeah, you got a filly there who's related to Bengua. Amala, mm. the damn one over Amal. Mm. Wow, Wiley Hall. I think she's going to love the step up in trip. Clark, last time I don't think that was the worst of efforts. It was, <laughs> excuse Good me, effort. <coughs> in a maiden handicap, Clark. Yeah. So, it's, so she had to give weight all around. I think she's going to take some beating. Okay. All right, so stealth attack uh, from 
Daryl Marie's side is definitely the horse to beat. There you heard it. The family of Bingwa looking for the mile and going extra. We'll put some selections up for you now. Race number two in this event, which is the start of the place accumulator. Darren's going like this. Banker the nine in the first leg, ideal gift. So he's depending on that ahead of the three in the next leg. That's um, number three on the card being Ice Sensation. Sensation. Then one, two, three, and eight by one and two by five, six, eleven by five, six, and eight by four and five. On to the third. This uh, is where Reefway tops the boards at five to two. Number five on the card this morning at about ten. Four Toto's Dream, four to one. And number seven, Quest from Afar, four to one. Darren, I know you're into Ice Sensation. I had a look at your PA. You've banked that. And uh, I see that Lunar Eclipse is five to one. The markets hasn't created too much certainty about anything here. What do you think? Uh, Clyde, it's a really tough card, and I've had to bank it somewhere, and I've fallen on this horse, Ice Sensation. Now, I went back two runs uh, where they fitted blinkers with her. I fancied her that day, and she was over racing all the way. Uh, she didn't enjoy the blinkers. Her rating's down 10 points in her last couple of runs. I think the pace is going to be on with Quest from afar, Lunar Eclipse, and Toto's dream in the race. And if she can just switch off, off the pace, I think she's got a really good turn of foot on her day. So oh. the value lies with our sensation at 5-1, to one, but it is a competitive card. So if playing wide in your pick six, add a few. There's been some concern about the stable in general, Darren. You're not worried? Um, in Durban, they've had a couple of winners. Um, in Cape Town, they've been a bit flat. Okay, well, that's good to know. These Durbans alive. Your side? She's my first pick. Darren's touched on all, uh, all the viewers need to know. Toto's dream catches the eye too, Clyde. She obviously needed a comeback effort. She never went handy on that occasion. She, in my opinion, she's more effective when she does go handy. They've obviously travelled her to KZN along with the stable companion. With the, with uh, the, it in mind that they are going to act on the poly track surface. So three and four, my top two picks. And then Luna Eclipse, when she gets to the front, she's very hard to peg back, but she needs to settle up front. If that happens, she's a player over here. Okay, let's put some slides up here and have a look. Thank you for that, Daryl. Here's a look at the selections for race number three. And here is a look at Darren. Darren, you want to take us through your pick six? So I've banked the three, but please feel free to add in the first leg. Um, if the banker does arrive, we're sitting pretty. Field second leg, one, two, four, and five, third leg, by four, five, six, eleven, twelve, by one, two, five, six, seven, eight, and four, five, and nine at the back. So Danya tops the boards now at 22 to 10. Second choice number two, New Orleans at five to two. Eight on the card, Capriana is nine to two. Five to one, number four on the card, who is um that was Badra, and then 11 to 2 about number 5, um, trip to royalty. Okay, so then you've got 15 to 1. Write your own ticket about the other two in the race. Not an easy race, I guess. The Gatsby stable got done. Yeah, yeah Darren, what are we doing? Um, well, there's nothing separating all of numbers 2, 3, and 8. That's New Orleans, Dania, and Capriana on form. I think they'll finish very close together once again. Um, the interesting runner is Yatta. I think she's trading at 15, 16 to 1. Samanga Kamala for Dennis Bosch. Stable, jockey, in form. This fully returns after a short break, but her rating has tumbled, and I think she could be competitive. Okay, so Yatta, Dennis Bosch had two winners on the weekend on um, Sunday afternoon. It was nice to see him have a good double. So that's at, one, at any price. What do you think, Daryl? Yeah. Clyde, I know New Orleans has got a work cut out at the weights. I mean, uh, Danya beat her, and she's three kilograms better off. But Muzi really gets a good tune out of Danya. I'm not saying the, the apprentice is, is incapable. Yeah. I'm just saying Muzi gets a really good tune. Right. So I'm going to say New Orleans is going <coughs> to... Clyde, we're battling over here. Yeah. I'm going to say New Orleans is going to reverse the form despite the weight turnaround. Okay. So New Orleans for Daryl is the one to beat. Forgive us as particles here somewhere we're nailing. 
or whatever, yeah. or we just did our money on the weekend and we're <laughs> battling to recover. <laughs> but here's a look at uh, some of the slides. Okay, here we go. This is what we're going to do with jackpots. Race four, and here's a look at what the plan is for you. We're going Daryl Marie two and three in the first leg by two and four, by three, four, five, six, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, by two, three, five, six, seven, and eight at the back, 192 Rand pot. Welcome back. Good to have you with us. Let's get on to our next race on the card now and have a look at what the market suggested we do in race five. And, you know, they're saying we should go Prince of Taranto three to one. Well, top of the boards anyway. That's the one horse. Tony Riverland and Muzieni, the team up. Number two, Sakulu is trading at nine to two. Five to one, Ideal Act and Father's Frost. Have a look at our signage at the bottom there with regards to our social media handles. Please feel free to join us at any time. Prince of Taranto, the one to beat here, Darren. Uh, definitely uh, the one to beat on his uh, good latest efforts. Last time out, I thought a strong field, the priceless ruler. That was a good effort. So even off a 90 rating, he should be competitive. I was actually leaning towards Sekulu. I like the way he turned it on late uh, over the 1,000 meters. And I think uh, the 1,200 will be no concern. So from a good draw, I'm going two over one. And then include Ideal Act and uh, the lightweight, just a guy thing. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about Ideal Act because... Um I think it's got to have some sort of claim in a race like this. Your first choice? Yeah, we liked him last time. Yeah. But, uh, he went off, I think, in the region of 11 and 2. Correct. Um, but that was on a soft track on the turf. Now you're on the poly surface, 1,200 meters, 200 meters shorter. I just hope he isn't run off his feet because he's mm -hmm. my second pick. Ah, first pick? Um, Sekulu. Mm. I think this track and trip is ideal for him, Clyde. In his penultimate start, uh, when he ran second to winter flight, that race didn't work out for him in the early stages. So, coupled with the fact that the Wayne Bardenhorst stable is now coming to form, I think he's the horse to beat. He's one from one with the compression mask, yep. or compression hood and the blinkers. That's the J over here, Clyde. Right. In the computer form, the J. That's what it stands for. Yes. Okay. So, track and trip ideal, he's the one to beat. I know Prince of Taranto's one from one over the course and distance, I just think now, at this stage of his career, he might be uh, looking for slightly further. Mm. All right, so you may be worried about the distance now for Prince of Taranto, but you're both on to Sekulu in this race. This is what we're going to do. It's another jackpot opportunity for us. Let's get that jackpot on now. It's a way to win combined jackpot. One, two, four, five. Five, six, eleven, twelve in the second leg. Third leg, two, five, six, seven, and eight. And the last leg, four, five, seven, eight, and nine. Right, let's get on to race number six now. This is a handicap, Phillies and Mare, 66, 1400 metres. Tough race, we know, not easy, but maybe the boys have got something shrewdy for us. Royal Kitty's top of the boards at 9 to 2 for Alison Wright. Keegan DeMello, the team. Uh, the Puller Schlengwa combination working well too. Casa Rosada, second choice at 6 to 1. And then you've got 7 to 1 and better about the others, likes of Birdwatcher, uh, etc., that have got some sort of claim here. Darren, let's start with you. Talk about this race. Weak field in terms of handicap anyway, but maybe a kind of race where we can put some money into trifectas or quartets. Yes, definitely. You know, the horse uh, that I thought was the value is Birdwatcher. Now, you go back four runs, she got beat a length and a half by Royal Kitty into second place. She is three kilos better off at the weights. The last two starts, they changed tactics with her and tucked her in off the pace. Um, before, she used to go handy and not find much of a finish. So I think if she settles two or three lengths of the speed, she could run them down. I've got respect for Leopard Lady. She's in form. Uh, Royal Kitty has to go into all bets. And of the rest, Sleeker, Silk and Zenikela. A couple of shooties that are not well drawn. That could be problematic for them, yeah? What do you think, Dale? This number 12, Zenikela, I'm happy that she's drawn out wide because... Oh, okay. It's always good to know said, why. The connections have said she needs a patient ride. So I should go drop out. Okay. Where else do you want to be drawn uh, besides what? Drawn right. one or two, you're going to be stuck on the rail. Mm. If you if you want him to give your horse a chance. Okay. Uh, so Zenakile, she's very likely raced. She won with a bit in hand last time out. She didn't beat the best of fields, but she's an up and coming filly. I've thrown her into all perms. Okay. So that's a shrewdy. Is there anything else in there other than Zinakele that you might no, want no, to No, no. Darren's touched on my leading lights over here, numbers 5, 6, 11, and 12. 
Okay. All right, guys, let's uh, have a look. You've heard it, so let's see what uh, the intentions are from our perspective and take some exactors 5, 6, 11, and 12. Let's get straight over to, <clears throat> excuse me, to Darren Burrows. Hard race, 92 the field. Name them, yeah, all. You can get a ticket, whatever you want. Uh, tough race. Maximus, 9 to 2. Measurable, 9 to 2. 9 to 2, Mr. Pagel. The market's not sure. They've even got horses like Spirits of My Faith and Kimura right up there at 9 to 2, 5 to 1. Lots of uncertainty here. Darren, what are you, where can you guide us? A tough race. I think I left two horses out the pick six, numbers three and four. Um, Spirit of My Fate ran against a bit stronger in his last two starts. Um, I think he should run a, a decent race. Uh, Winter Waves, not out of it. Kimura, not out of it. Maximus, not out of it. And Mr. Pagal. So I'm I'm not getting involved in this race. All right. So you're hoping for a massive result if we're running in exotics. You, Daryl? I'm not hoping for results. I'm hoping to survive. Ah. Yeah. I don't like the look at the of the race, Clark. I mean, Maximus is better off with Kimura. Uh, Winter Waves is better off with Maximus. Maximus last time out, they went very quick in that race. I don't think it really suits him. He didn't quite get to the front and he's most effective when he's on the lead. So I don't know, Clyde. Just hope we get, uh, I'm sure we'll get through the exotics. I've got, uh, what's it? Six out of the eight. Sure. Okay. What about tipsters don't know how we know? What are we going to know if they don't know? So let's you know uh, what I'd say? hope for to the viewers that really want to have a bet. Watch the canter boss. If you can, look at them in the parade ring. Make your decision thereafter. Because most of them have got chances. Um, Watch maybe, them move to the gate. Yeah, make your decision thereafter. If they go down like iron tail, you know what to do. Correct. Okay, let's uh, have a look. This is what we're going to do now this race. Race seven, here it is. We're taking the exactors five, six, seven, and eight. Homeward bound now, let's get on to the last race. And 15 to 10 about this horse uh, from the Rich for East table and all around the world. Uh, top of the boards, 33 to 10 about Barbati, a second choice. Four to one, number nine, word for word. And then you've got number seven, trip to Nebraska, who's trading at five to one. The rest are all in double figures. Can we end off with uh, Richard Ferry on all around the world, Darren? Uh, definitely the horse to beat, but you know, Clyde, he's had 19 runs in the maiden. Uh, always a bridesmaid. Last time I tried Handicap Company and uh, was a bit disappointing. Uh, definitely at best uh, should should just about win. Uh, Barbati's not out of it. Uh, the puller runner, I think the stable's in good form. I wouldn't ignore his chances. And then uh, word for word, returning after a bit of a break, Keegan DeMello in the saddle, uh, in with a chance. Okay. All right, um, so nothing really convinced about you in terms of having a go. You, Daryl? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the Hollywood horse is probably the horse to beat. Yeah. Uh, Darren touched on he was against winners last time out. Didn't get to the front. He loves racing up on the pace, Clyde. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Richard is going to bounce him and give him every opportunity. Barbati, go back four runs, Clyde, of the very same course and distance. He ran beyond Halibos or Halibos. Now, uh, he's, I think, um, run two seconds in handicap company. So he certainly hasn't disgraced himself since ex exiting the maiden ranks. Yep. I think Bob Batty's a player over here. And then you've got the filly, the stable uh, from Robbie Hill. Uh, trip to Nebraska. Yep. Have a look what she's said to shoulder. 51 One. kilograms. <laughs> she's receiving 9 kilograms from the likes of all around the world and Barbati. Mm. I think that must put it into contention. I see the form not great, but you've got no weight on its back. Um, and uh, sorry, Clyde, whiz bang. He's likely raced. He has to improve on his latest efforts. Yeah, all right. So now you've made it even harder. I wouldn't be jumping into this favorite, although he's always to beat. He's very limited. Okay. All right. <clears throat> what does that mean selections wise? Here we go. The last race on the car today. And uh, four, five, seven, eight, nine. We're using that in a quartet. Four, five, seven, eight, nine. Some are looking to run the favourite over.